If you asked me today if I existed, my answer would be, there will always be benches where I can sit or sleep or stand and jump. And the silence of my heart will swim across the ocean of my mind, unrelenting as the puget sound. Rain coming off the ground in the mist of my pores. Crying seems to engage my joy and laughter my grief. There will always be benches. If you place your ears on them, they will tell you how many miles many have run and slept and ate and hearts broken. But I will just look out today and see forever. He fell in love. No, really, he literally fell off his bicycle when someone on their rollerblades bumped into him on Lake Shore Drive. He fell. They both fell. And after they passed the initial who was right, and I'm so sorry, but they both realized that maybe, just maybe, they were both supposed to bump into each other and fall flat on their faces that February Wednesday afternoon by the Lawrence exit. Who in their right mind would ride a bike or a rollerblade in the dead of winter in the windiest part of the windy city on Wednesday at 3 p.m.? Well, they both did. Peter. Peter Lawrence. He said, getting up from the grass. Dead grass. It would actually hurt if it's on the bike path he fell. The dead grass provided a cushion for his face. It was filled with snow, so instead of a crack in his head, the right side of his body went numb. After wiping the snow off his frozen body, he offered to help. They were going in different directions, one north to Argyle to get some herbs, and the other to the Gold Coast for therapy. But both ended up at Chava Cafe after passing Chase Park to stare at the naked trees. They're not naked. They're dressed in snow, just like you when you fell. They both smile. Well, maybe the other smirked. It's a different kind of sensation when one falls. A tingling sensation occurs inside the body, and in Peter Lawrence's case, outside the body. And although half his body lay frozen on the dead grass, time itself froze. It stopped altogether, and all one could hear was the wind whistling. They both concurred to the sensation and didn't discuss it that day over roasted red beets and La Tortuga coffee, but simply stared at each other as the numbness of the right side of his body dissipated away. Walk, walk back to his place, simple, cold, crisp, like back home. We bake. Well, I bake while he watches adventures and babysitting and helps roll dough and raw cane sugar. Sort of. He watches my every move, like the vanilla extract sprinkled over his chest or the pungent smell of the molasses. It's an old house. Could be seen as post-Victorian, not from this time, from a different millennium, from the time when he first fell, like the time when he first fell at the lakefront back home. Without an apron, she gently tussles his hair. He likes to spend his time at the barber. They talk for hours. Funny, it's called Sweeney Todd, but he's been there several times and hasn't been turned into a shepherd's pot. This reminds him of that time he fell. Remember, you were on your bike and I was on rollerblades? Snowless, but the texture seems similar. The kiss, the night, the molasses. 
6 minutes, 41 seconds. That's all I have left. Because when time runs out, salt in my eyes would have filled the shot glass. It's better than scotch. In the middle of my living room, where Christmas in the netbook screen offers light to a 70-year-old heater in darkness, the three-foot tree I've had for seven years stands in front of the glass table. It comes out of hibernation once a year, no longer pining. I took a nap after a cigarette and went to deep sleep. I recall nothing when my soul disappears. It was somewhere that I lost where I went, like sunglasses. Maybe that's why I feel so empty right now. Or maybe it's just the darkness of this place. It's like love in the nick of time. Is that what I lost in my dream?